So this video is going to focus on isomerism. Firstly, I'm going to go through what isomers and structural isomers are, and then the three types of structural isomerism that you'll come across, which are chain isomerism, position isomerism, and functional group isomerism. And then finally, I'm going to go through what stereoisomerism and geometrical isomers are. So isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but are not identical. Structural isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formulae but the structures are different. And so structural isomerism can be divided into three different types. So the first is chain isomerism. And when we say chain, we're referring to the carbon skeleton or backbone of a compound. So for example, if we have a compound with the formula C5H12, for chain isomerism to occur, the carbons in that chain need to be arranged differently. So in other words, how many different ways can we arrange five carbon atoms to give you different structures? So the most obvious way is to just have five carbons in a line. Second, if we move one carbon from the end to the middle, we have a branch. And then if we do the same with a carbon from the other end, we end up with two branches. So for the compound with formula C5H12, we can get three chain isomers. So all of these have the same molecular formulae, but different structures because the carbon atoms are arranged differently. Secondly, we have position isomerism. So position, positional isomers have the same molecular formula, the same carbon skeleton, and the same functional group, but that functional group is in a different place in that compound. So for example, if we have a compound with the formula C4H10O, we can see that both of these have the same molecular formula, the same carbon skeleton, where the four carbons are just in a straight line, and the same functional group, OH, which is an alcohol, but in the one on the left, the alcohol is on the carbon at the end of the chain, and on the right, the alcohol is on the second carbon along. So these two are positional isomers. Lastly, we have functional group isomerism. So functional group isomers have the same molecular formula, but the atoms are linked together differently to give you different functional groups. So for example, if we have a compound with the formula C2H6O, two possible structures with this formula. On the left, we have an alcohol, and then on the right, we have an ether. So both of these have the same molecular formula but different functional groups. So stereoisomers have the same structural formula, so the carbon skeleton, the functional group, and the position of that functional group are all the same, but the atoms are distributed differently in space. And an example of stereoisomerism are, ge are geometrical isomers. So these differ in the geometrical disposition of the atoms. So in other words, how are the atoms arranged in relation to the other atoms in that compound? So for example, if we have a compound with the formula C4H8, so these are the two possible structures. So we can see that both of these have the same carbon skeleton. There's four carbons and the same functional group. So in this case, it's an alkene. And the position of the alkene is between the middle two carbons. So those are all the same. What's different is that each of these have, each of the middle carbons have two dif different groups attached and one can't flip over or turn over because there's no rotation about the double bond so we call these geometrical isomers
So if we had these two compounds, where only one of the carbons have two different groups attached and two of the same groups on the other carbon, if you flip one over through 180 degrees, you'd find that they're actually the same, so these are not geometrical isomers.